we have unloaded already and drove down to our reload destination. We are uh, we're getting a reload going back over to Kansas City. Uh, over to where we delivered at the other day. Both down to the same place. So, I might hit on something that might be a little unpopular, or might get me shot, might get me picked on. So, I received a comment on my 1800 mile in three days video a couple weeks ago. I, I made it, it kind of hit on in my last video. Uh, what the guy said but the more I thought on it you know I explained hours of service in the last video how that all works I guess the part that kind of aggravates me the most is how some of these older drivers tend to believe they're at a higher standard than what some of us younger guys are and the guy went straight out of his way to make sure he knew that I knew that made sure that he he knew that I was a millennial. I mean I can't hide the fact. I mean my within my age range, that's where I fall. I can't help it. I wasn't born at the same time as my parents. <laughs> so one thing I struggle with ever since I started driving when I was 22 years old back in 2010 is older drivers that talk down on me for being younger or talk down on other drivers for being younger uh, you know, I, I love having conversations with older guys, hearing the old stories of how, you know, they'd all get together, have four or five guys running together across the desert, chit-chatting on the CB. I love those old stories. I love looking at the old trucks. There's a lot I love about the old, you know, the history in trucking. But there's a lot of things that have changed over the years because of the old ways. So one of the things I struggle with is being a younger, I mean, I consider myself younger, I guess. I've got in that middle age and you know, I'm in my mid thirties. But I started when I was 22. Couldn't grow none of this. Matter of fact, at one time I actually got drugged into a high school print or yeah, a high school principal's office for him thinking that I was actually skipping school. But one thing I struggle at is being talked at by older drivers. And what I mean is I enjoy having conversations, especially with the older guys that have been around doing it a long time. I like hearing about the old trucks, how things used to be done. Um, I've heard a lot of older drivers talk about how much better things are now compared to what they used to be. You know, they didn't have air, you know, some of them started early enough, they didn't have air conditioning in trucks and spring ride suspension. And, um, you know, and you hear, hear them talking about the advances through the industry. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for those type of guys. And then you got the other ones that talk at you because you're some sort of subhuman because you didn't experience all that. But, you know, it, it's, it's a pain, I don't know, I can't really say it's a pain as much as it's, it's obnoxious to hear people talk like that. Um, now I'm not complaining, it is what it is, but you know, I've always tried to learn as I go. I mean, outside of some securement stuff, I haven't really had, 
you know, older drivers come over and offer me tips, you know, if they see you struggling backing into a spot, you know, it, it, this is what I'd do to make it a little easier or something like that. Um, I've never had an older guy do it. Uh, matter of fact, I've been broke down working on a truck in a truck stops. And I've had more younger guys come over and offer help than an older guy that's, you know, supposedly back in the day, rebuilt a truck on the side of the road because that's their only option to get to the next destination. So, some of these guys hold it against the younger generation of truck drivers that we don't didn't experience what it went through in the, you know, between the 70s and 90s. I'll say 70s to the early 2000s. That's not our fault. Uh, you know, a lot of the, like when I started, I started on e-logs. The company I drove for was a larger company. They were slowly implementing e-logs. I was one of the victims that got implemented on e-logs. Uh, I ran paper. You know, when I had my first truck, it was a you know I leased onto a company. I didn't have, you know, I ran paper log, logs there. Uh, some of these guys, you know, they talk about running, you know, three or four days straight, go do a West Coast turnaround or East Coast turnaround. And, but, you know, a lot of them talk about the pills and things they took. There's a reason why we get, you know, have a pretty strict drug program now, drug enforcement in the trucking industry. There's a reason we got e-logs. Um, you know, there's not a doubt in my mind that some of these young guys could run three or four days straight without taking pills. Not a doubt in my mind that they could. Get them a Red Bull or whatever, or Monster or whatever, they're good to go for a couple days. I used to do it. Um, I didn't ever do it driving a truck, but, you know, I, I'd work. I'd wake up on Friday mornings, go to work. I'd get up about two in the morning, go to work. Work till five. And I, I didn't go to bed till probably about seven o'clock on, on Monday night. <laughs> seven, eight o'clock Monday night. So that, that included, you know, every day working a 12 hour shift in a hot smelter. So Without a doubt in my mind, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of these young guys can keep up with what the old guy, older guys used to do without the helpers, you know. But, I don't know, I just, I just don't like being talked down on or looked at looked at as being a subhuman or whatever because I didn't experience that. You know, when I was young, I was working with 98% of the people I worked with was older than me. Uh, getting started driving, you know, it was pretty well the same thing. 98% of the people I talked to out on the road was older than me. Now I'm kind of in that middle stage where there's a lot of young people coming in and, you know, the older guys are getting out. And that kind of leads me at, you know, some of the older guys that are still driving got to remember. Somebody's got to replace you someday. And it ain't going to be your grandpa. I can tell you that. I know there's a lot of older guys that haven't driven in 15 years or more. They have no idea of what, you know, we got to go through with these e-logs. Because they ran paper logs and didn't have to worry about it. Uh, but like I said you know people shouldn't hold what we didn't get to experience against us um, I mean I don't know why people would get upset or act like they gotta put a feather in their hat because they've done the things But, you know, instead of trying to talk at people, learn to talk to people, explain things. You know, this is what, this is why we encourage you not to do the dope. 
because here I am, you know, having to take pills to stay alive, you know. Back then we took them to stay going, now, now we gotta do it to stay alive. You know, it, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little bit of a different breed. You know, I kinda, you know, I've run around with older people my whole life. You know, I grew, spent a lot of time around my grandparents and their friends and I don't really deal with a lot of people my age, but you know, just every once in a while you run into that arrogant one that you know, acts like their struggles, you know, is your problem. I don't know. Kind of a kind of a sticky situation. I mean something the older folks gotta remember, you know, especially in the trucking industry. Technology changes, the trucks have changed. Uh, eventually you're gonna be out the door one way or the other. Somebody's gotta replace you. You might as well stick around and you know, you can talk about the old days, don't get me wrong. But you almost gotta be able to be willing to learn at the same time because these younger guys understand the technology that they're stepping into. Whereas some of you older guys wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, we are loaded. Put my millennial hey dudes on. We're gonna head towards Kansas City. At least that's the plan. Well, stop it. Oak Grove. No. Not planning on staying here. We're gonna get going here in just a second. What time it is? It's almost six o'clock. Got about thirty minutes to get over the. Where we're parking at, we parked the same place we did the other day, but uh, go over there, get set up for the night, call it a, a night, I guess. Went in, got us a shower, washed her stink off, as my grandpa used to say, and uh, got us some Wendy's. They got, still don't have a vanilla Frosty. Had to get a dream, an orange dream sickle Frosty. I mean, it ain't a vanilla frosty, but it's okay. Gotta be smooth for these curves. Tip over or flip completely upside down through here. We don't want to be upside down. Hell, the Kansas City skyline. Nothing overly spectacular, but it is Kansas City. <laughs> well, there's another view of the Kansas City skyline from the Kansas side. Oh, such a beautiful town. Not really. Just another city to look at. Huh. I parked in my parking spot. How about that? Sure, bud. Just go park over here. That's fine. Park up here. They'll wake me up in the morning. I'm sure. If I'm blocking their gate. Should park right next to him. Told you guys I'd come back and visit you. Yeah? I'll talk to you better in the morning, but we gotta clean our windows. I didn't even notice the FLC had aluminum wheels on it. Yeah, good. Wonder how much I want for them. Guess that'd be the big question. Uh, the lady told me that they had several people talk to them about it, but. Uh, nobody's ever jumped on it, so I don't know if they're just wanting too much for them or what the deal is. I mean, if the price is right, a guy would consider buying one just to tinker with, you know? I don't think I'd ever truck one, but I'd definitely tinker with it. Get it for like a Sunday cruiser, you know? You guys see it here. I'm going to clean my windows for you. 
just for you guys. That's all I can see, dude. Just so that you guys are happy. Put that sucker nice and good. Get all the boats off there. There we go. Let's get this side. Oh yeah, get it on there nice and thick like. So, we're not, you know, like I said before, we're not aiming to upset anybody with, you know, you know, saying that, you know, the reason that things are the way they are is because obviously things need to change at some point. Like I said, I don't agree with all the changes. I think some things should have been left alone, but you know, somewhere, some way, in the past, a concern was brought up over it. Um, I know I might upset some people, and I'm hoping to start some good conversation with it. Um, you know, some people take offense to it when you call them out on saying, hey, it's your fault. <laughs> um, whether you got caught or not. People know it was going on. It just matter matter or not if you got caught and had to pay your ticket. But we're gonna finish it up today. Like I said, it's kind of kind of weird, different video. Uh, my mindset. You know what? I've been doing this. I've been around trucking since. For, right about 30 years now been doing it myself with the exception of two years that i took off been doing it for 13 close to 14. i have seen a lot of changes in my 10 years i've seen i know the stories of the old times got to experience some of them riding with my dad and my mom so yeah it's not new to me i know like i said i know the stories i've seen it while i didn't personally take place in it i've seen it firsthand there's a lot of things that changed for the good like i said some things shouldn't have needed didn't need changed it got changed but i think in the long run well they suck now in the long run you're going to see better results um, like I said, maybe this might start a conversation with people. I don't know. Maybe it might upset people. Make people hate me. Maybe I might become the whistling diesel of trucking. <laughs> I hope not. Y'all stay safe out there. God bless you. Help somebody out today, would you?